Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things coming at you this morning, uh, whatever time or day it is with you, talking a little bit about the why, a little bit of the how in here, and why and how do we kind of learn to know the difference between the inner product of two vectors and the outer product. And the beauty of this I can say versus and it's a pretty basic concept um, and it all comes down to once again dealing with our three-dimensional math of a vector and I'll call a vector a and use a small letter for ector remember for the vector equation most typically from Gilbert string a a matrix times a vector X equals a vector B so in this case, I used an A, but this is a small a, so we'll go ahead and keep that notation. Vector A, if you want to think about it, we want to learn to get students so they can deal with the two systems of dealing with the burden of common core. Good stuff, but not necessarily tied to the planet where they're using Xbox 360s. I'll use a vector here of 1, 2, 3. This is the same as 1i, it's an i vector. Go ahead and undo, head it undo, head it undo. One I plus two J plus three K. This is how they might see it later in a, a high school classroom. This is just basic vector notation. And the vector B we'll call it equal to, we'll give it just an arbitrary maybe 5 in the X, minus 7 in the Y, and 6 in the Z. So our expectation is that these things are two different vectors. And we now want to talk about the dot product. And I'll just show you first the dot product of these two, A vector dot product with B. That's called the inner product. And all it becomes is it's a scalar. So this is going to become a scalar. And it's actually 1 times 5 plus 2 times minus 7 plus 3 times 6. So we can say it's equal to 5 plus minus 14 plus 18. And you see I'm dealing in with three dimensions here. You could do the same thing with two dimensions. It's basically the x component multiplied together plus the y components multiplied together plus the z components multiplied together. And so we have this is equal to 9. Okay, that's the inner product. And in reality, what it is, is A transpose times B. That's the inner product. But what happens if we do the outer product, which is something like A times B transpose? What do we get? Now, this like many things I do, goes back to something introduced in pretty good math classes in the K6, and that is something called the lattice method, which is just basically a way to break numbers up, like vectors thought as numbers, into different pieces and multiply every piece by each other. So if we do A times B transpose to get essentially um, a vector that looks not like this, this looks like this multiplication of 1, 2, 3 by 5 minus 7, 6 and a 1 by 3 times a 3 by 1 is a 1 by 1 so that turns out with an answer that looks something like that. If instead we do it this way 1, 2, 3 times 5 minus 7, 6 we're going to get a different answer entirely. We're going to get a matrix. This is 3 by 1 times 1 by 3. We're just going to get a, a matrix that is a 3 by 3. All right, so it's going to have 3 by 3 matrix. And in that matrix, the numbers here, the i times the i, the j times the j, will end up in these three places. That's the inner product. And these numbers out here, in some way, turn out to be 
effectively something that does the cross product or effectively this whole thing called an outer product. So we'll see when we start talking about real manifestations of this, how it works. So we'll point out, and I'll leave this up and just squeeze out a little more space. I'm going to talk about how lattice wise this would work. And I can do one, two, three times five minus seven and six. And we say lattice in some way. It's just a graphic method, bad lines, but I'll go ahead and do this. And you have five times one times five is five, two times five is 10, three times five is 15. Minus seven times one is minus seven. Minus seven times two is minus 14. Minus seven times three is minus 21. Six times one is six. Six times two is 12. Three times six is 18. If you notice these here, add up to the inner product and the rest of these um, have a little bit more import than just being able to add them. So if you look at this here, this turns out to be nine. And we're gonna talk about now, I'm gonna cross these out for you and talk about what's really going on here. And that's I, that's J, that's K, I, J, K. You get into the knowledge of being in a right-hand system that J times I, J times I is minus K. And K times I is J and I times J is K and you notice you have a plus and a minus thing going here and K times J is minus I and I times K is minus J right you see these are differing in sign and J times K is I there's the plus I and the minus I and K times K again was not covered. So you have the reality of numbers having different parts and then the multiplications together um, having some vector vector values. So I mostly want to point out that the lattice method does this. It kind of and what we're not doing here is doing the whole crazy shoots and ladders thing. So let's now see what this looks like in a calculator. What I just want to shine out is why you learn inner versus outer product learning the difference between a dot product and a cross product, the difference between a dot product with b and a cross product with b. And later on you'll see that a dot b is the same as b dot a, but a cross b is not the same as b cross a. For that reason we bring up the calculator best practice. I would call it probably seventh grade. I would actually say middle school, which would put it in sixth grade, but who am I? I'm just a father. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and not train you how to run the calculator, but tell you right now I can make the first matrix, second matrix, and I'm going to edit A, and I'm going to make A a 3 by 1, and we said it was 1, 2, and 3. Great. So I can quit. Second matrix, we're now going to edit B. And B, we said, is a 3 by 1. Essentially, we're teaching students so they can keep their brains separated from what they're forced to do for the ACTs to what they're doing all the time with their Xboxes or they'll be doing um, when they start applying math to real 2D and 3D situations and not just something that's kind of tied to a curriculum good, bad, or indifferent, nothing against it. The order seems a little off, and it seems to ignore a lot of the computer science skills students need to get in around fourth grade. So we said this one is five minus seven, and we had six. So now we have those two stored, so I can quit. They're in matrix A and matrix B, and so now we can do some basic math. Well, we can do the A times B, I'm sorry, A transpose D, B, so we can go second matrix A, second matrix math, 
transpose times second matrix B and get the answer 9, which we saw right here. Now, that, of course, was the inner product. And if we go the outer product of A and B transpose, we can do that as well. Second matrix A times second matrix B. And then we do the second matrix math transpose. This is not anywhere worse than learning to run an Android phone. This can all be done in a very easily in any good spreadsheet, either a um, open source one, Google Docs spreadsheet, or Excel. Multiply those together and you see our answer here. Now in this case, we have the numbers, but of course we have to know this is minus 7 times minus 7k, so it's 7k. This is 6 times j if you would. So learning that you can get the numbers here and pull them off, but if you notice here, we have the difference. And we've learned all that by just learning to deal with uh, points, if you would, or lines or whatever you would as vectors. I'll finally give you the application to something like an ACT test if you had two points and if they were 2D or 3D, what is the difference between them? Well, you could do this basically uh, you could do second matrix B minus second matrix A and then store it into second matrix C. So that now puts that in. Now what is the length of that? Well, the length of this is going to be the square root of C transpose C. So let's see if that works. That's we have to take the square root, then we'll do that afterwards. So we can do second matrix C, second matrix C, second matrix math transpose, and gets us an answer of C C transpose. I wanted to do that wrong. It should be C transpose C. And once again, you're kind of you realize you have a check there because you know you're looking for a distance squared. So we're going to go C second matrix math transpose and then second matrix C. And you have 106 and then you can take the square root. So one, go back here, clear, 106 to the one half power or 106 square root if you would but probably better learn how to do this to the square root on a calculator and that's the distance so that is the distance between these two points it's also would be the distance between if you did it in a 2d vector or a 5d vector or a 10d vector right so long-winded 15 minutes but showing you a little bit while you start learning a little bit of this matrix algebra stuff even simple vector stuff and then showing the distance be the difference between the inner and the outer product you'll hear those terms i'm going to say i never realized how they've all came out of this lattice method until i started with my daughter teaching me it and then proceeded through dealing with 3d work with students for 10 years and then having uh, the benefit of the EXPEL grant from the U.S. government. Thanks for listening. I will talk in another video about how many places this is used. Essentially, to finish this off, the, the inner product is used to get the distance between two points and the outer product is used to get the direction um, of the perpendicular of the plane defined by the two points, if you would, and the origin. Huge, huge stuff. Thanks for listening.